Uh, hello, class. Uh, good evening. So today we're going to discuss about our introduction to residential design. So we're going, uh, I'm going to discuss to you about the tiny house. Okay, so I think if you review our past lessons carefully, uh, you already covered all the basic parts of the house. So we already designed the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, etc. We already have a grasp and understanding of how uh, to design uh, these spaces. Okay. So before we going to design something such as a big house, story, or you know, one story house, let's go back first uh, with the concept of the tiny house. Okay. So, so tiny houses are, are primary uh, full-fledged dwelling units on a small scale. So building and living in a tiny house is done from a conscious choice as an answer to a desire to live a simple life. Let's focus on material possessions and the smaller type of food. Clever ways of utilizing space and the use of innovative technologies are characteristic in the design and construction of tiny houses. A tiny house is up to 50 square meters, ideally. So it's a partly self-sufficient of high quality and functioning as a full-time inhabited dwelling. Being mobile and or fully off-grid is a possibility, uh, not a requirement. Okay, so I think this uh, this tiny house is a new movement class, uh, especially in the western uh, portion of this world. Okay, so we we're going, uh, we're going there. We are going into uh, designs which are smaller and more compact and quite. But if you have observed here in our culture here in Asia, uh, because of the uh, I think the rising uh, prices of uh, the land, we also uh, see that our culture is quite different from them, especially when it comes to family ties. That we have been living in Asia in uh, smaller houses or units compared to the rest of the world. So, what are the benefits of tiny houses? So, tiny living plays a valuable part in addressing our housing affordability and taking steps towards a lighter type of footprint in terms of material use. Space to occupancy ratio and energy efficiency. So, this could be delivered through micro locks, garage conversions, and of course, tiny homes. So, the tiny house fills a niche. Not only is it small in size, but can match and appear house-like in terms of it, its aesthetic and neighborhood fit. So whether it is on wheels or built as a container unit, this sense tiny houses can and have easily fit to character in a home retention program. So there are tiny houses class that, uh, that are mobile, so meaning they can be towed around and transferred to another location from time to time. And there are also tiny houses class that are built uh, permanently in a certain site. Now let's um, discuss about uh, the design tips. Uh, the first is use hold down options. So one standby of tiny house architecture is fold down furniture. So this generally refers to desks and tables, though which though with a little imagination you can probably think of all kinds of ways this particular feature would be beneficial. For example, think about how much space you'll need for a dining table. So if you fold it into the wall when you're not using it, though all of a sudden is not such an issue, many people do this with benches as well, though there are no limitations. So uh, when uh, they say use fold down options less, you could probably uh, design your tiny house in such a way that uh, you uh, fold down something turns into your bench or when you uh, hold something it becomes your uh, dining table okay. so in this aspect class uh, we can really utilize our lessons on anthropometrics and ergonometrics uh, earlier in this semester next is uh, use your walls Along the same lines, don't forget how helpful your walls can be. So the tiny houses with the most going on inside 
them tend to be the ones with walls that were designed to play a vital role. Your kitchen is a great example of this. The more items you can hang or otherwise store on the wall, the less clutter you'll have on your kitchen countertop. So this means less mess and more room to do your cooking. But also think about how much drawer space you would need for your utensils, when it would be so much more efficient to store them vertically. The next is keep things clear above the waist. So, although the kitchen may be an acceptable exception, it is generally good advice to keep clutter below waist level in your tiny house. This will give you a greater sense of space and allow you to move around without your shoulders and arms constantly running into things. The next is go with high ceilings. So, similarly, your ceilings. If you're building on a trailer, you'll need to pick one that allows you to give extra height to your tiny house. But the effects will be well worth it for shed, cable, or any other kind of ceiling that reaches as high as possible will make any tiny house feel a lot bigger. However, it will also give you more space to install windows and bring in natural light, saving you money and make, making for a charming Fifth advice is install plenty of windows. So aside from bringing in natural light, windows will also make the home feel bigger. So if you plan on building your home on wheels and traveling with it of, uh, often or simply having it parked out in a rural area, windows are a great way of enjoying mother nature from the comfort of your tiny house. Next is choose light colors. So aside from being a natural light, windows will also help uh, make the home bigger. You plan builder, uh, okay, so I think uh, it's already repeated class uh, number six. But when uh, when it says you uh, when it says about choose light colors, so for example, last uh, I think you already learned that in your theory of uh, architecture or in your design one that when you uh, choose lighter lighter colors it gives an an impression that the space may look uh, bigger or uh, yeah it gives a lighter impression it, it makes the space become a uh, look uh, bigger compared to when you're coloring it uh, uh, dark all throughout uh, the entire interior so observe less have you ever uh, uh, seen a ceiling that is darker than the walls? So if you color your ceiling darker than your walls, it would somewhat give you an impression that it looks heavy or that the height is uh, the height uh, is uh, uh, small. Okay. But if you're coloring it uh, with lighter colors, it will give a sense of appearance or in your that such a way that it look much bigger than it actually is. The next is use mirrors. So yet another way to keep your tiny house feeling large is with strategically placed mirrors. You'll want at least one option that can show you yourself from head to toe. But this can also increase the visual size of your room as well. So some tiny house owners have even made an entire wall to a mirror. So they are also great ways to help spread light throughout the tiny house. So this is also a trick class. Uh, this is also an architectural technique that you can use even, uh, when you design smaller spaces. So when you place a mirror, it gives, uh, it gives the mind a sense of perception that that space is bigger than it actually is. Number eight, give space more than one purpose. So another common trait of tiny houses with a lot of offers that no space is just given one job. For example, you may have a couch area for relaxing during the day or sitting to do on your computer at night though you might be able to flip it out into a bed with a kitchen table that folds into the wall. You could also have another area 
where seats can flip out into a guest bed or the cushions are removed for extra storage space. Next is downsize. So designing a home is going to be much more difficult if you're constantly thinking about where all your books will go. So how you need a spot for the sewing machine and more room to hang out all your pictures. So be courageous in getting rid of the unnecessary and you'll get a better tiny house later. Next is avoid partitions. One way you can get more from the space in your tiny house is by keeping unnecessary partitions out of it. So this is how you get a home office, dining room and guest bedroom all in one. For the most part, try to keep permanent walls to the ones that surround your tiny house and the one or two you need for a bathroom. Okay, next is utilize sliding walls. So, however, if you decide more walls are necessary, for example, if you have the need for the one bedroom, then consider using collapsible or sliding doors. So when people need their privacy, the walls are there to help. And privacy is a necessary though, having mobile walls means you square footage feels much greater. Then don't forget about storage. So think about all the possessions you plan on bringing into the tiny house with you and then add a little extra space. As we touched on earlier, you can hide your storage all over the place from the floorboards or your seating options to under your bed. Again though, don't let your storage become a crutch for keeping buying items you don't actually need. Number 13, consider a deck. So while it may take away some of the square footage from inside your tiny house, having a deck can make a huge difference too. For one thing, it gives an easy way to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. It also functions as an extra room if you just need a little time by yourself. So decks also provide a natural connection to the outside world, which can help fight off any impending feelings of claustrophobia. Next is odorless composting. So, Composting has become a popular method of waste management for tiny house owners. So, while many people may do it for green reasons, it makes a lot of sense for those living in tiny houses. A lot of them don't own the land their tiny house is on or otherwise have restrictions with what they can do with, uh, with it or on it. So, this makes keeping a compost pile or otherwise dealing with the garbage in a productive way a real challenge. Fifteen loft beds. So one very common design technique for tiny homes is the loft bed. It's an especially attractive feature for those homes on trailers because they don't need a whole top floor, yet they can still give enough space to sleep comfortably. So this way, too, if your spouse wants to sleep while you wish to stay up a while longer, this doesn't have to be an issue. Loft beds are always the way to because your bedroom is the one place you really don't need to be standing up to use. Next is use space under the stairs. So, if your tiny house is big enough to include a second level, you might be using stairs to get there. In that is, make sure you optimize the space below the stairs. As opposed to just installing a solid staircase, you can have a simple crawl space drawers that extend out or just leave the area wide open. Next, next is combine the bathroom and shower. So taking a note from many rooms on trains, a lot of tiny house owners have combined their bathroom with their shower. So both are necessary to a home. After all, but when separated, they can pick up a lot of space. I think that's the last uh, tip for how to design tiny houses. And these are our examples class. So as you can see here, so there's a stair going up to the loft bed. And then under the stairs class, you can see that it's also utilized. 
then if you look at the other example class, you can see that you know, the walls are all used to utilize well. Then, this is an example of uh, how they design their bathroom, their wash areas, and dining houses. Okay. So, this is an example of an exterior. So, it looks uh, uh, quite simple and compact. Okay. Just like this one, I think the bed is in the loft area. Okay. So, uh, that would be our lesson class for our tiny house. So if you have any questions or clarifications that's regarding uh, tiny houses or uh, any of our lectures, you can uh, message me on Facebook or send an email and I will uh, respond as long as I'm online. Okay, so see you next week and stay safe.